In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an ultra small form factor laptop from a company known as X Plus. These are also known as netbooks, but this is really a two in one because it does have that fold over screen. And this is an upgraded version that I've been waiting on for a little while now. About six months ago, we took a look at one very similar, but it was powered by an Intel N100 chip, definitely on the lower end side of things. But when it comes to this new model, we've actually got the i3 N305, which is offering much better performance than the N100 or the N150 can put out. This thing is ultra portable, and it's one of my favorite form factors right now when it comes to these smaller laptops. It's got an 8 inch 1200p display. As you can see, we've got a backlit QWERTY keyboard, and it's got a track point. So it's actually an optical trackpad right there in the center. A split space bar, and right underneath that, we've got our left and right mouse buttons, plus the power button also dubs as a fingerprint sensor for easy login. Inside of the box, along with this mini laptop, the only other thing that was included was an instruction manual, and we've got a 36 watt, 12 volt USB Type C power supply. When it comes to I.O., we've actually got more than I thought we would. On the left hand side, USB Type C, which also dubs as a charging port, you can use a PD wall charger mini HDMI for video out, and a full-size USB 3.1 port. Over on the right-hand side, micro SD card reader, another USB 3.1, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It's got dual side-facing stereo speakers, and it is a bit tinny because, I mean, it's definitely a smaller laptop. But when it comes to the overall specs, this is powered by the Intel i3-305. Eight cores, eight threads, with a clock up to 3.8 gigahertz, it's got an Intel 32 execution unit iGPU, and this will clock up to 1.25 gigahertz. 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM running at 4,800 megahertz, and this is non-user upgradable. This came pre-installed with a 512 gigabyte 2242 M.2 SSD. The screen is an 8 inch 1920 by 1200 IPS display at 60 hertz, so it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5.1, I believe it's not listed over on the website. A 26.6 watt hour battery, and they claim up to six hours of runtime. We're gonna have to test that by the end of the video because I don't believe, you know, under normal use, we can get six hours out of this thing, but it does come pre-installed with Windows 11. The only thing we can really upgrade here is the storage. We've got a little hatch here, single Phillips head screw. And once we get inside, we've got that 2242 M.2 SSD. This is a 512, but I believe we can do up to at least a two terabyte drive in here. And as far as I can tell, they're only offering this in one RAM variant, 16 gigs. Obviously, we've got a really small form factor unit here. Touch screen is how I've really been navigating, but we do have this little track point here, optical mouse, fingerprint slash power button over here. We can disable the backlight on that keyboard quite easily, but it's just a single brightness setting, so you can't dim it any more than it already is. And we can fold this 8-inch display over, making this kind of a 2-in-1, so you can really turn this into a tablet. And once it's folded over, the keyboard will be disabled. We can also go into portrait mode with this thing, and the Intel N305 does have more than enough power for web browsing, video playback, document editing, email checking, emulation, and even some light gaming. First thing I wanted to do was take a look at a couple benchmarks versus the Intel N150. And when it comes to Geekbench 6, on that i3 N305, we get a single core of 1,329, multi 5,269. On the N150, single core coming in at 1,294, multi 3,169. And that has four cores and four threads. So obviously that N305 is coming ahead. And with these tests, we're only at a 15 watt TDP. It's got a little bit of a boost up to 20, but the N305 can do up to 35 watts. I'm not sure if the cooling system will handle it or not. If you wanna see a video like that, let me know in the comments below. When it comes to the iGPU on the N305 for wildlife, we got a total score of 5,109 on the N150, 3,551. So we've even got a more powerful iGPU here because it's coming in with 32 execution units as opposed to 24 in the N150. Now I wanna get into a little bit of gaming and this is definitely not marketed as a gaming machine, but it's totally possible to get some light indie gaming, older titles, and even some higher end emulation done on this thing. First up, we've got Hades 2, we're at 1080 medium settings, 
Running at a constant 60, and I suspected it would work pretty well here. Even the N150 can handle this game pretty decently at a lower resolution, but with this setup here, we can up that resolution. OG Skyram 900p, low settings, and I do think that we could take this up just a bit. There's a few hitches here and there, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I do have the latest Intel driver, and uh, I mean, even with the new ARC control panel, we've still been running into some issues with older games. But for the most part, at 900p, we are at 60 with this one. The last PC game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077, and I'm pretty impressed not by the performance, but the fact that it actually started up here. Now I knew this game wasn't going to perform well on the N305 with this uh, lower end CPU and GPU combo. Right now we're at 720p, the lowest of the low settings, with XCSS set to performance, and we're actually seeing an average of around 27 FPS. This is far from playable, but it's still pretty impressive to see it booting up at least and getting in the game. Most of the time would just crash out here. But there's one last thing that I wanted to test. I actually want to try some frame generation here. And with Cyberpunk 2077, the only way we can get it in game is by enabling FSR 3 frame gen. So I'm going to do that here and we're going to be at 720p low FSR performance with frame gen on. Okay, so it's not great. It did up the frame rate, but uh, the game does feel more sluggish because we've got those fake frames being generated here. And it's kind of fighting the CPU and GPU to generate the real frames and the fake frames. So it feels really funky, but it did take us up from an average of 27 to an average of 36. Still not playable like this, but I'm still impressed by what this little N305 is doing just at a 15 watt TDP. Now it's time to get into some emulation, and for this, I wanted to test out some PS2 and some original Xbox. Here we have PC SX2, God of War 2. We're actually at 720p with it using the DirectX 11 backend, and it's running at a constant 60 FPS. If you wanted to emulate some lower end systems like Dreamcast, PSP, Sega Saturn, even GameCube and Wii, this will handle it. GameCube and Wii at 720, easier to run games can be up to 1080 with this chip. It's actually not bad for a little emulation setup, and as you can see, it is handling PS2 also. But the last one I want to test here is some original Xbox, and we're going to be using XEMU. And with something like Forza Motorsports, it did originally run at 30 FPS. That's what we're at right now. It might be a bit hard to see on screen. I did try going to 2x scale just to make it look a little better, but it kind of fell on its face there with this iGPU. Just really pegged it out at 2x scale, but we are at 1280 by 960 with this emulator, and it feels pretty good like this. Again, it originally ran at 30, so that's what we're at right now. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth for all of these games here. This is uh, pretty awesome that we're able to do some original Xbox on this little chip also. As for battery life, again, over on their website, they claim up to six hours of runtime, and with screen brightness set at like 10%, we could probably do that with YouTube at 720p. We've got a 26.6 watt hour battery, and through my testing, screen brightness was at 50%, 720p YouTube video playback on a loop, four hours and 12 minutes, and local playback, you can probably get more out of it. But with an easier to run game like Stardew Valley, just kind of idling there, three hours and 22 minutes runtime. So not great. I mean, we've got a much smaller battery here and this does do up to 15 watts in performance mode. Overall, I do like the form factor of this thing. In fact, I mean, I think that this is kind of the perfect travel size for a little laptop. Wish we had a bigger battery. And when it comes to charging this unit up, it only does up to around 18 watts. So it's not a super fast charge on that battery. Carrying a battery pack around is something I usually do anyway, but uh, it would be nice to just get more runtime out of something like this for sure. One thing I'd love to do here is install Linux on this little machine and see how it works. I mean, if it does work out pretty well, I might make a video, so keep an eye on the channel. If you're interested in learning a little more about this thing, I'll leave some links in the description, but that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.